option for doctor. I have a teenage son. I'm worried he's feeling stressed with having to stay home. Are there any signs of stress I should be looking out for, perhaps uh, serious signs? Great question. Parents are generally pretty much in tune with their kids, and, and especially if you're right there at home together. Uh, I don't have any specific advice for what might be considered signs of serious stress other than the obvious ones, uh, anxiety. And, you know, fortunately, the uh, son is old enough to be able to communicate quite well verbally. So I, I would just, again, go back to transparency and honesty and, and try to just keep that connection as, as deep and open as possible. Mm hmm um, here's a good one coming in for you, Dr. Hammer. The more I get stressed out, the worse my body feels. Does stress affect our immune systems? Absolutely. Acute stress uh, results in an increase in the adrenaline and cortisol in our body, and that is uh, often adaptive. Uh, that is, if we're facing danger, we have an increase in adrenaline in our body and so on, and, and that will help us deal with danger in, in some cases. So. Uh, that same response with a, an increase in adrenaline and cortisol, though, on a chronic basis, definitely is maladaptive and uh, does suppress our immune system. It has adverse effects on our cardiovascular system. And in fact, it induces changes in the body akin to aging. So we, we really put a high emphasis on, mm -hmm. first of all, sleep, exercise and nutrition. Try to be disciplined about those things during this time and then go to the principles in my book, which are gratitude, acceptance, intention, and non-judgment. Okay, next one coming in for Dr. Hammer. My parents are in their late 60s. They're feeling lonely at home. Is there any way I can connect with them without possibly exposing them to the virus? Sure, well, first of all, if you live in proximity, you can certainly uh, visit them and just maintain a safe distance. I think uh, in some cases, people are a little bit overly cautious. If we're, for example, sitting outdoors and we're more than six feet away, there's really very minimal risk of exposing each other. And then, of course, we have the virtual means of staying in touch by FaceTime or Skype. So, yeah, I would encourage everyone to reach out to their family and loved ones during this time, either if physically present, if possible, or certainly by this online mechanism that we're so fortunate to have. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, next one coming in. I'm worried about going outside too much, but I see a ton of neighbors going on walks. Should I be, should I be exercising outside? Absolutely. Uh, it's imperative to, first of all, as I mentioned, try to maintain good sleep hygiene, get regular exercise, and eat as well as you can, given the obvious limitations. But exercise is key, and also, being outside and connecting with nature is, is so vital because it makes us remember that our problems, no matter how big they seem, are, are small in some ways. But I think the risk of transmitting or being exposed to the virus outside during a brisk walk or jog or bike ride is, is extremely low and the cost of not doing so is much greater. So I would definitely encourage people to get outside. Okay, that sounds great. Next one. Um, I keep having horrible dreams. Is there a way to reduce the number of bad dreams I'm having? Well, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, without getting into the interpretation of <laughs> dreams in particular, uh, I think that may be a result of, of, again, this chronic stress that we all feel, and especially thinking of stressful things before going to sleep. My recommendation for that is uh, that each night before we go to sleep, as we're turning down the bed or what have you, we think of three good things that happened during the day. And we all can imagine three good things, connecting with a, a loved one, for example, having a good walk, et cetera. And by redirecting our thoughts to positive thoughts at the end of the day with this three good things practice, it's actually been shown that people sleep better and they're in general happier. So this is a really cogent way of demonstrating that we can rewire our brains to be more positive. All right, next one coming in for Dr. Hammer. I hear practicing mindfulness can help reduce stress. Do you have any suggestions on how to do that at home? Are you a proponent of, 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 of breathing or yoga or anything like that? Absolutely. In fact, uh, my book, Gain Without Pain, uh, discusses those four principles of gratitude, acceptance, intention, and non-judgment, and then wraps it up in what can be even a very brief meditation. And so, Mindfulness is extremely important. There's lots of resources online for people to learn about it. 
um, and you know online activities actually that that represent mindfulness. So basically, mindfulness is using our minds intentionally or with purpose to be present, and therefore we can reduce the future anxieties and and how we tend to catastrophize and also dwelling on shame and and regret in the past. It, just helps us be present and breathing is key, of course. Um, and again, there's lots of resources online and, mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. uh, pretty soon my book will be available. All right, Dr. Greg Hammer, Stanford University. Thank you, sir. We do appreciate